Hello and welcome to the 2020 Stone Food and Drink Festival here in the demonstration kitchen. Not quite the same as we normally have it, we know, but Covid's made a few changes to everybody's lives and we're trying to bring you what we can as we normally have done over the last 15 years of all the excitement and the good cooking that you can find in and around Staffordshire at the moment. Uh, big, big thanks before we do anything else to our sponsors, to Jowls. And Jowls, as you may know, are building the Crown Wolf development in the heart of Stone. And that's where we're standing now. We're standing in the pub, which will hopefully be open in spring next year. The theatre's just to one, off to one side. Jowls have been fantastic in supporting the festival for the last few years. They've been great friends and they're committed to helping us grow as we are with helping them to promote their business. And we've also got to thank Lexus of Stoke. Uh, fantastic cars they have been as well. It's extremely helpful very supportive. Uh, go online to Lexus and I'm sure that you'll get free Green Shield stamps with all the cars that you buy from them. They've been very good and hopefully they'll be with us again for another couple of years. As I said, we can't really be with you. We haven't got the atmosphere that we had, but hopefully we can recreate for you some of the uh, excellent dishes that you will find going on in Westbridge Park. And our chef for this demonstration is Mr. James Sherwin, who is the owner of I wouldn't say a specialist, but it's certainly a very bijou restaurant, the uh, Wild Shropshire, in the middle of Whitchurch. Uh, sounds a fantastic little place. There's no menu, as James will explain in a minute. He just goes out and finds what he can, and you get what you're given. Is that the case, James? It's something like that. Although you, you, when you say it like that, it sounds like I'm finding badger and stuff at the side of the road. I've never tried badger. No, nor me. <laughs> I've got no one to either. Um, yeah, so I'm James. I'm from Wild Shropshire Restaurant. We are a... Oh, the, the really pretentious way of talking about it is that we're a terroir-led micro-seasonal restaurant, which I know sounds awful. But essentially, what we do is that we, uh, we don't advertise a menu. The menu changes each week. Uh, you know, the, 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 sort of coming up towards our service days, we'll go into the allotment, we'll speak to the butcher, we'll see what we can forage, and we'll design the menu from there. So it's all sort of tip-top condition and uh, sort of as seasonal, as perfect as it can be. And how many covers do you have? Fourteen. And you told, just told me before we started shooting this piece that they're currently booked up until the middle of October? Yes, yeah, we're doing all right, which is uh, quite nice. It was um, to be good. Yeah, a bit scary opening a new place, but yeah, we've got some bookings, so good times. Good. And what are you cooking for us today then, So James? we're going to do a duck dish today. Uh, so we're going to do a piece of duck breast with a beetroot salad and some burnt cream. Um, I try and keep it as sort of ambiguous as possible so there's some place to sort of play around and sort of, you know, work, work out as we go along what we're making. Is it the sort of dish that you could tackle at home? Yes. Whether you'd want to or not is a very different thing. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm going to sound awful now, but um, I uh, released a book recently. Hi, please my my book. Anyway, um, so I released a book recently and my mother-in-law was looking at it. And my mother-in-law is a very straightforward, down-to-earth farmer's wife. Yep. You know the types. And she looked at it and she said, well, it's all very pretty, but I wouldn't cook anything. <laughs> and, um, yeah, there you go. It's, um, there's also a, pl a place on any menu for meat and two veg. Yeah, completely, completely. Yeah. Definitely. There's um, yeah, horses, of course, isn't there? There's time and place for everything. But um, we're going to try and do something a little bit nice. It all looks very, um, it all looks very minimal, and that's kind of by design. You're going to come and you're going to have 12 courses. And so we want lots of clarity and uh, the flavours to come through, so there's not too much on the plate so that you can taste everything. 12 courses. That's more like a banquet than a meal out. <laughs> Not quite a banquet, but no, there's, um, there's a lot of courses. Uh, they're all very small. And like I say, they're all, they're all very concise. You know, on this dish, there'll be the, but the duck, there'll be the beetroot, there'll be a little sauce, and there'll be some cream and nothing else. It doesn't need anything else. So that's what we're going to do. Excellent. That sounds fantastic. Fantastic, right. So oh, I hate cooking live. It's where it all goes wrong, isn't it? So, first thing I'm going to do is burnt cream. Now, burnt cream is brilliant. I stole this, if I'm honest, off a chef from Sweden. I saw him do it with something and I thought, that looks really cool. So, I'm going to do it and I'm going to talk you through it. Alright, it's always the hardest part of the day, working out how to turn everything on. Cooking with, that's the oven. <laughs> Cooking with uh, LPG gas. Yeah, uh, cookers. Um, apparently, if there I we are. turn the oven on, the hobs don't work. There we go, perfect. So, 
empty frying pan, gonna get it super, super hot like I was cooking a steak, so you want it smoking. And then what I'm gonna do is have some double cream and I'm not gonna touch it, I'm gonna leave it alone. Now the bottom of that cream is gonna go black, it's gonna burn, it's, it's gonna car caramelize the bottom. So when you yeah. say burnt cream, you mean burnt cream? It literally is just burnt cream. And what we'll do, we'll leave it alone and it'll reduce a little bit. The top will stay, um, you know, we're not gonna touch the top of it. And so when we sort of, uh, uh, when we agitate it at the end, you'll get all the burnt bits come off the bottom of the pan. And then all of a sudden it's going to taste like mushrooms and cheese and miso, all sorts of lovely things. Right. It's, it's quite sure. It's something that whenever I do it, it's the one thing everyone talks about on the menu. Now in here, we're going to make a little buttermilk sauce as well. Um, I love acid in food. I do. Um, I blame Jamie Oliver because I'm late to this game and he was obsessed with lemons. We don't grow many lemons over here, but we have buttermilk. So what we're going to do, we're going to heat this buttermilk, it's going to split. We're going to pop it through a sieve and we'll have the curds and the whey. The whey, really acidic, we're going to use that, add some butter, add some cream, and it's going to be really, really nice. Now, we're also going to cook a duck. So you are deliberately splitting the cream? Yes. Yeah, I've done that by accident, by not keeping an eye on the things, yeah. No, it deliberately, um, uh, just so it will, we, we don't, I don't want the cream in the stuff. I'm going to add cream yes. to it to get that. Um, I just want that acidic note. And the other thing we're going to do is going to serve some raw beetroot. Um, I'm a big believer in, and I know it's a bit of a cliche, but pick your vegetables while they're at their, uh, the best. Don't cook them. Yeah, but, uh, I try, quite often I find you, you, sort of, you cook things. Milk's a great, I know milk's not a vegetable, but cold milk that you've got off your doorstep, you remember as a kid you used to get mm -hmm. off the doorstep? That and warm milk taste very, 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 very different. Yes. Cooked carrots, raw carrots, very different. Same principle. Cooked yeah. potatoes, raw potatoes. And we have actually done a raw potato dish and it was really, really, really nice. Um, but it took a lot of work to make it nice. Okay, so and we'll start cooking our duck as well. So this is just, I mean, this is just getting there. It's getting hot. It'll take a wee while. Yeah, let's do that one on there. I do a lot of these demos and the worst bit is always trying to work out how to turn everything on. It, um, yeah. Now, my, my duck breast, I don't put raw salt on it, I brine them. So what I've done, I've taken, I've made it 2% brine, so uh, you, know, you can sort of scale this up, but I've had 100 grams of water, 2 grams of salt, heated the water, added the salt, dissolved it, let it cool down, and then I will leave this in the, um, in the brine for about two hours, wash it off under cold water to get rid of all that salt, and pat it dry, and then you get a nicely seasoned up breast. I'm not a massive fan of just putting raw salt on everything. Um, other chefs will tell you different things. You know, you know what we like, we're all, we're all divas, aren't we? Now that's a quiet and neat little trick. You put a weight on to keep it flat, keep the skin flat down. Yeah, just so I want the... Um, I know with, with duck goes in skin side down, doesn't it? Yeah, so cold pan, skin side down, and then, you know, not, not too hot a heat, I'll get some heat into there and we'll cool it down. And um, the other thing I like to do is add lots of butter to that pan as well. Um, I know a lot of people say, you know, you don't need any excess fat with duck, but, uh, you know, without saying like James Martin, the more butter the better, frankly. <laughs> It's the chef's standby is butter, but again, it's imparting flavour. It is, it's, you know, it's there for a reason, it's just not just for the sake of, you know, putting it in, it costs money. You know, good butter costs a hell of a lot of money, so we are, you know, so we're careful with it. Okay, so this pan is getting hot. Now, be, you have to be careful with this bit, because if you add too much, it's going to boil over, it's going to spit at you, and it's going to be... Um, at this point, I will stand back from the... <laughs> okay, so super hot pan. I mean, you can hear that straight away, can't you? See the smoke? Yes. There you go. Now you can, I mean, you, you, you can see how aggressive that is. Leave it alone, stay away from it. That is boiling, as you would expect anything it to is, boil yeah. in that heat, I yeah? Mean, it's going to reduce. Now, the bottom of that is going to get, it's going to get black, and, you know, you, you know, black is usually black. I've never it's heard of that good. technique. Ever. It's, uh, you know, I, like I say, I stole it off a Swedish de uh, chef who does it with uh, crab. So you get a piece of crab, they, they cook it, they spray it with a bit of vinegar and they serve it with this and it's just brilliant. Now, this isn't taking long at all, I don't think. So you see how the cream's almost changed colour a wee bit? It's kind of gone a, almost a yellow colour instead of white. Pick that up on the camera, but yes, it, it has changed, yes. Yeah, yeah. I can done. see it's started to burn around the edge. Yeah, so we are done, take that off the heat. So that's had a minute, possibly less. 
yeah, uh, yeah, completely that. About a minute, and then we're just gonna. And now I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but the bottom of it is all stuck and burnt. Yeah, and you see, you can see the yeah. burn bits coming up. So we should, obviously this is all off the heat now. You can scrape all that stuff off. So you do this in a nice clean pan. And it's cooking in the residual heat from the pan. Yeah. yeah. And there we go. Just take it off. If you take it too far, it will split a little bit, but that is not a problem with this. Turn a bit more in. Pull it down, and we're winning. And that is just standard double cream, as you can buy from anywhere. Yes, proper double cream, though. I um, did this once with um, Elm Lee. My, um, my, I sent my father-in-law to the shop for me because I'd forgotten something for a demo. And they came back with Elm Lee, and um, Elm Lee's all oil, isn't it? And yes. It, it, yeah, it doesn't work. No, it does not work. And I'm, <clears throat> I didn't realise at the time, so I'm stood on stage, and it's all going horribly wrong, and I'm like, oh, God, you know, how, what am I going to do? But never mind, now. OK, so my duck is doing its thing. It's just skin's getting nice and crispy. And we're going to turn that heat down a little bit. And the one thing, ladies and gents, that you won't get from a filled demo like this is the fantastic smell that's left in yeah, the process. completely. Completely. Right, so... But believe me, it's lovely. <laughs> so if you can see this now, uh, my curds and whey, you can see they've split. So we're going to turn that off. No, we're not. We're going to leave it on. I'm lying to you. What we're going to do, we're going to run it through a sieve uh, with a J-cloth or a muslin. And what that will do is... In here... I've got my curds, and in the bottom, I've got my whey. So we'll just get rid of that in the bin, because we don't need it. I mean, you can use that for something else, but for this, I don't need it, so I'm not going to keep it around. So I'll quickly for this stuff before we do anything else. I mean, it's a lovely looking skin, isn't it? That does look absolutely beautiful, yes. So it's back in the pan. I'm going to add a little bit of butter to that now. Um, Back in my weight. You don't have to use one of those, or you can just use a pan like that. That um, weight's very handy, actually. I can see it's using. Now, you're adding butter. Oh, uh, duck, duck is notorious for containing a lot of fat. Yeah. I just, and you're adding a bit more? Yeah, I just, I, I like it, to be honest. It's, um, it's just really, really nice. But by butter, you're, you're adding a, a, a richer fat, so it's a richer flavour. Yeah. yeah. So it's all just, you know, it's, it's all just flavour, to be honest. And I never used to, and again, it's going to sound like I'm ripping other chefs off here, but I saw another chef, you know, I thought, Oh, cause I, one of the things I found about chefs, and this isn't me bemoaning other chefs, is that we are we taught one thing and that's all we do, you know, for the rest of our lives. We do it that one way, um, and I kind of want to do things different. It's about us. being creative. Yeah, completely. Now, as we are live, I'm going to tell you something I've forgotten. So this whey sauce. So this is just the way I'm going to reduce that down. Usually, I put a little bit of birch syrup in there. So Birch, Birch syrup. So, as in the tree. Uh, again, sorry, as in the tree, yeah. As in the tree. Right. So, early part of the year, um, it's sort of February, March time, just as the weather stops being brutally, brutally cold, the trees pull up all their, yes, all yeah. the sap. The sap is rising, yes. There you go. The sap is rising, perfect. And you can, you can harvest that sap. It doesn't hurt the tree as long as you do it properly. And... If you reduce it down, I mean, it takes a long time. If you get 100 litres of sap, and you'll get that in a, you know, a day. You know, you need to take it down to one litre, and you get this beautiful, like, really stunning st syrup. It's kind of like, you know, it's our maple syrup, essentially. You know, we don't have many maple trees over here. We do have some, but not a lot. So we have birch syrup. It's really big in Eastern Europe as well. Uh, so we'll mix, depending on sort of how heavy-handed I've been with the birch syrup, and if we've got any left, we'll use either birch syrup or honey. I just had a sweetness to that. So it'll be like, they'll be sweet, they'll be sour, all that kind of stuff. But... Let me just check my bag. Definitely forgot the honey, so we're not going to. So that's just going to come down a bit. I've got some butter in there. I've got some more double cream in there. I think it's very comforting to know as a, a, a part-time, even a part-time amateur chef, that I forget things and make a mistake, <laughs> that uh, you professionals can do it as well. Oh, God, yeah. All the time. Uh, this is one of the, uh, the hard things I found. So we've been open a month now. And I went from working where we used to work, the kitchen was out in the back. You know, I always hated that. I wanted an open kitchen, not because I've got some massive ego or something. It's like, you know, look at me when I'm cooking. There's a little bit of that, if I'm honest. Um, 
You wouldn't be a chef otherwise, would you? No. Um, but I wanted that connection with, um, oh God, I know I sound when I say these things. Uh, you know, I wanted that, you know, talking about going to gigs and stuff, you know, that, that tiny little crowd and you're playing and they're there. And same with cooking, you know, I want to see their reactions and I want them to. Cooking is a very, and uh, eating is a very personal experience, of course. Yeah, and I, you know, I want that for our customers. That's what I want. And I. And so the idea was we'd have an open kitchen, which, which we have, and it's great. However, they can see every mistake I make now. <laughs> and um, one, of the, uh, one of our regulars called me over oh, God, the first couple of weeks we were open. I said, James, I can see how annoyed you're getting as you get more annoyed. And I'm like, yeah, that's me. And you can, and it's, it's quite hard. You know, I, we did some, um, last weekend, we did some little donuts, savoury donuts. We made them with duck fat. And we put, like, savoury donuts? Yeah, lovely. Oh, my um, Lord, we're going to try that. They were lovely. Um, so we did some comfy duck leg and made it crispy like you. You know the crispy Chinese duck yeah, you get? Yes. So a yeah, little fermented raspberry ketchup. It was a really, really lovely dish. And we got them all, all done, and I picked them up, moved them around the kitchen, and dropped them on the floor in front of the customers. So we didn't serve that dish, and they were, little mm, bugger, um, you, well aware. Happens, you, can't, you can't turn around and blame the KP. <laughs> no, you really can't. I, I would try, but I can't. Right, OK, so um, my dish, I should talk about this a wee bit, really. So we've got our duck, which is fatty. We've got our uh, burnt cream, which is also very fatty. We have got our whey sauce, which is lovely, but it's got some dub double cream and some butter in there. We've also got a beetroot. Now, no one's excited about beetroot. I'm aware of this. What I, wanted, what I do with vegetables a lot is that I serve them raw. I don't think... Um, for the most part, vegetables get better for cooking them. Um, give that a little tickle. Uh, right, now what we're going to do, we're going to leave that to rest. And I think we're there. Um, obviously, you know, with your meat, everyone has their own preference, don't they? I like it quite pink, uh, depending on what I'm having. So we're just going to take that out. Nice purple, nice little brown skin on it. Got a sauce doing its thing. You could, if you wanted, put all that duck fat in there and it'd be loads more flavour, but it's already, I think it's rich enough as it is. Right, so, let's move these things out of the way. I'm getting a bit messy here. Beetroot. Uh, no one's excited by beetroot. Uh, same with turnips. I am a little bit. What we're gonna do, we're gonna serve this raw. So. Raw beetroot. Yes. We're gonna serve a little beetroot salad. I love beetroot. Okay. Fresh, fresh beetroot out of the ground, uh, boiled for four or five minutes, and it's beautiful and sweet. There you go, perfect. And um, yeah, but I wouldn't think of serving it raw. I see. Now, if you bite into a beetroot like this, like you would an apple, it's not going to be a lot of fun. But no, there we go. What I'm going to do? I've got a little Japanese mandolin. It's a little toy, and um, I do like it. It was a very expensive toy, and I'm still in trouble for buying it. Um, but it does some really, really cool things. So just take the ends off. Now, when I first saw you put that on the bench, I thought it was a, pan uh, a pasta machine. A lot of people do. Um, that's a Japanese mandolin. Japanese mandolin, yeah. So, got a raw vegetable. Let's stick it on here. We do this with a lot of things. Um, do a really nice apple dessert with it. So we, it's essentially an apple crumble, but done in the most pretentious way I can possibly find. And we, 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 sh we shred the apples on it, and it, you get these long sheets of apple. But I'll show you what I mean. There we go. Now, not to exaggerate, but if you know, the cameras could pick it up, you could stand kind of the other side of the room with this. And what we have is this very, 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 very long sheet of raw beetroot. And it's super thin. Now, Which you... actually looks not dissimilar to seaweed. I've never thought of it like that, but yes, yeah. it does. Do you want to try some? I mean, you've, you've tried raw beetroot before, but I think because it's so thin, the texture of it, it's just, it's slightly different. And it's... It's got a beetroot edge to it. But it's, it's got not... a crunch. Yeah, it's... A quite delightful crunch. And that's kind of what I want, you know, I, I want my vegetable to be crunchy and to be fresh and to... And then the sweetness kicks in. Yeah, I would sweet. never, ever have thought of doing that. Well, the idea is that we portray how they should taste and not... Um, 
And I shouldn't even beat with a white shirt, should I? <laughs> no, you really shouldn't. Um, I think quite often we can, and I'm really guilty of this sometimes, I'll just add flavours for the sake of it, you know, just for, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine about, um, he was pickling carrots, and he was adding all these things to it, and I was like, well, what do you want it to taste like? It's like carrot. Well, it's not going to taste of carrot, it's going to taste of star anise and fennel seeds and all these things you've added to it, which is, there's nothing wrong with that, but if you want the carrot to taste of carrot, you just, you know, you make it carrot. Now, although it. that is cut very thinly, James, it's still quite robust. Yes, it is. So what we're going to do now, and I'm making loads of mess doing this, we're going to cut some very, almost like pappardelle or something like that. So I'm going to cut some very, very thin strips of it. There we go. Now, I could do a wedding on that much beetroot. So we will take our brown bowl, and you, this is literally how I'd serve it in the restaurant. I'm a very big, but my KP hates me, because I'm a very big fan of if we could use one plate, but three instead, let's use three, because it confuses customers when you turn it with all these plates and like, what the hell's going on? <clears throat> so we're going to serve our duck on one plate with our burnt cream, our sauce in a little pan. So that would just go in there. But again, presentation is all part of the experience. I think so, yeah. I mean, you don't get married in a cheap suit, do you? If you can help it. You haven't been to my wedding, though. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. You make the effort, yes. It's, it's about making an effort. Of course it is. Yeah. And, you know, I'm charging the customers, you know, not, I don't think it's a lot of money, but it's certainly some money. Let's do it as best we can. Let's not be lazy about it, because, you know, it, this... You know, I was talking to my daughter, actually, about it. I was try, trying to explain to her how it's a creative profession. You know, maybe it's not... You know, maybe it's not art or music or something like that, because she's very artsy. Once it gets to this level, I think it is, yes. When you say this level, you've not tasted anything yet. It could be very I was talking about fine dining generally, <laughs> James. But it is an experience. I think so, yes. So what we've done with this, and I don't know if you're ca picking that up on camera properly, is we've taken that ribbon, so we've, you know, we cut it into these, sort of, these long ribbons like this, we just fold it up on itself, and what it'll do, it'll be interesting texturally, when you, put, when, you, know, you spoon your own sauce on, you can have as much or as little sauce as you want, you'll get bits with sauce, bits with, you know, not, and you'll get these different flavours, and then we're just going to put a few... And this is the whey sauce, isn't it? This is the whey yeah. sauce, so that is just the split whey, a um, little bit of honey or birch syrup or, you know, sugar if you want, just to get that sort of sweet and sour idea. So, you know, when you go to Thailand, everything's sweet, sour, salty, mm. and sweet and sour... We've got fatty, you know, the, the duck will be a little bit That's salty. Rich, yes. Yeah, so, and then we're just going to add a little bit of forest herbs to these. So, <clears throat> here we've got some, I mean, these are carrot tops, uh, wild carrot tops. Be super, super careful with these because they look a little bit like um, hemlock, which will kill you. These won't, and I know they won't, but they look very, very similar. And I'm literally just going to dot these around, just, you know, make it look nice, a little bit of colour, a few extra little bits of flavour as well. Just, you know, and it, what it'll do is it'll just give you a little bit here and there of this stuff. This stuff is, oh, this is my favourite thing in the world, other than maybe my kids. Sometimes this more so. So this is, um, this is Oxalis or wood sorrel. Uh, you can mm. see, it looks like clover. It's got little heart-shaped leaves. Now, have you ever tasted this? What's it taste like? The first time I tasted it, I, uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't put my finger on it. And my wife said, my wife is a very good cook. She couldn't either, so we asked the waiter. OK, fair enough. Yeah. And I thought, but to me, sorrel is just a, well, it's a wild herb, I know that, but it's, it's something you wouldn't really eat twice at. No, but for me, it tastes like lemons or sort of green apple skin, something It's like sharp. That. Yes, it's It like adds a sharp edge, yes. And it's, um, yeah, I'm a big, big fan of sorrel. I love this stuff. We get the, um, we go the big French sorrel, so it's huge. Yeah, that's the one I know, yes, and, yeah. Um, you know, pop it in desserts and stuff like that. So this one, this is um, yarrow. Um, it grows everywhere and it's in everyone's, everyone who's watching this has got a garden, this stuff is in it. I know, I pulled a load uh, out before we went away, yeah. There you go, my mother-in-law, in fact, this sorrel stuff, this oxalis or sorrel, uh, my mother-in-law used to pull that out. And I said to her one day, what are you doing? And she sort of looked at me and I was like, that, I'd pay a fortune for that. What are you doing picking it up? Um, but this stuff, sorry, yarrow. Uh, it tastes like juniper, it tastes like gin, that kind of thing. Um, so, you know, juniper, beetroot, all those things, they kind of work with each other. Go, a little bit of greenery. 
And again, this is just to make it look like, you know, make, you know, just add a little bit of flavor. But this is showcasing British herbs, whereas traditionally cooking is based around rosemary, basil, etc., yeah. which have always been Mediterranean based. Yeah. So, I mean, this, this is different, thing. yes. Okay, so that beetroot grew in my allotment. I picked it, you know, it grows about 15 meters from my house. That grows on the side of it, that grows just up the garden a bit. The nasturtions, we planted these nasturtions and for the most part caterpillars have decimated them. Oh, black fibre um, nasturtiums, oh, yes, I know. And then we've got some calendula leaves and again this is just for a wee bit of colour just to make it look... Yeah, and you, you know, you can make vegan honey from stuff like this. So you make a little uh, sugar syrup and add loads of calendula to it and it'll just give this uh, sort of reduced... But energy. marigold, calendula are very versatile anyway. Yeah. And I think, you know, there's all sorts of um, sort of health benefits as well, which, I, to be honest, I don't really get into because that's not what I'm good... Well, I say what I'm good at. It's not what I really know, so I don't sort of get involved with that kind of thing. And then nasturtions, last of all, I'm guessing everyone's tried nasturtions. They're very peppery flavour, isn't it? Yeah, completely. You know, so we don't use pepper in the restaurant. If we want a peppery flavour, we use nasturtions. We dehydrate them, turn them into a powder, that kind of thing. Um, and, yeah, just, again, really, really lovely. You know, it's a, it just, it, <clears throat> for me, it makes sort of, it makes no sense that we'll, we'll import these things from thousands of miles away, and yet we've got them in our garden. One of my favourite ones, and I just have to ramble on a wee bit, <clears throat> is pineapple weed. So we have loads of pineapple weed, and you'll have loads of pineapple weed. Um, stinking way, stinking may weed, as my, um, yes. my father-in-law calls it, because he's a farmer. And it looks like... It looks like daisies without petals, but if you rub the yellow head on it, it smells like pineapples and mangoes and all those things. And if you never tried that, no. I mean, texturally, it's awful as it is. But if you infuse it into a sugar syrup or into vinegars and stuff like that, we've got these pineapple flavours in the middle of Staffordshire or Shropshire, yeah. and you know, not these things that we expect. And uh, I just, uh, for me, there's something really, just really interesting and quite cool about that because it's, you know, it's the discovery, isn't it? You know, this. Well, it is. It's, it's, Cookery is all about discovery. Yeah, I mean, so we've got our, we've got our uh, little beetroot salad. Beetroot salad there. And just for the record, it's very, very hard to do that for 14 people at once. Um, I can imagine, yes. Yeah. We've got the waitresses sort of all around it trying to do stuff, and the KP's trying to, he's been dragged in to and do we've it. We've got the duck, which has been resting for a good few minutes yeah. now. And it feels a wee bit over, but um, here we go. It's all right, actually. So again, you're not going to get a massive piece of duck. <clears throat> but this is a salt aged duck and so it's really rich and we're not going to give you a lot, we, you know. But again, if, the, if these are just two of um, 12, dishes. 12 yeah. dishes, then you don't want a lot. What you're, looking, what you're presenting is the variation on a taster menu. Like, what is, yes, or tapas, which yeah, is all different. It's exactly. it's a very similar principle, yes. It's exactly that, to be honest. And there's something... Oh, I quite like it. I think, you know, if you go for a taster menu and there's too many things going on on each plate. It just loses all its clarity and loses a lot of its, you know, what you're trying to achieve with it. So we keep it simple. I went for a, <clears throat> I went for a, to a, a two star, two Michelin star restaurant in Denmark called Kadao. And one of the desserts there was clotted cream and some strawberries that they put into the freezer and they defrosted. So they got like that mushy texture. And it was unbelievable. I'm like, Simple. I'm eating strawberries and clotted cream in you know, the middle of Denmark. It was just unbelievable. It, you know, things don't need to be complicated for the sake of being complicated sometimes. And what I'm going to do with this is just take a lot. Duck with, but this is one that I must try. A bit of burnt cream. <clears throat> a and bit of burnt whenever, cream. Obviously, you know, we, we don't tell our customers what they're eating. And so they'll try that and they'll say, oh, what was that burnt cream? What was in it? And I'm like, no, it's no, just, it's just burnt, burnt cream. cream. And you can see the sort of faces kind of going, oh, okay. So, like I said, everything looks very minimal, but that's by design. But take it on the concept of this is, there's another 10 dishes to go. Oh, God, yeah. A hell of a lot, yeah. There's at least three desserts, you know what I mean? So, James, that has been there fantastic. You go. Thank you very much for having me. Now, for those of you who have been to the festival before, will know normally at this time, I would say, don't do chef for the service of ignoring it. Please come and try the food. <laughs> you can't do that. We don't all have an audience here. But I know the camera crew and the rest of the support team are helping me, are salivating at trying some of this. Thanks very much, James. Thank you, thank you for having find me. Find James' details at Wild Shropshire. You'll find it on Wild Google. Google. Yeah, wildshropshire.net. Wild uh, and a, a final thank you to our friends at Lexus Stoke, 
who again, we wouldn't be able to do much of this without their help, great supporters of the festival. And again, uh, the big thank you to Jowls, to Steve and all the team at Jowls, all of them, all over the Midlands. They are absolutely fantastic. Uh, they're doing an awful lot for the town, they do an awful lot for local businesses and they are great, great supporters of this festival and hopefully we'll see you again very soon. Thank you much, very much ladies and gentlemen. You have just been watching James Sherwin, a wild Shropshire restaurant in Greenend, Whitchurch. A massive thank you to Jowls Brewery for allowing us to film this video in the Crown Wharf in Stone. Please note this building is still under construction and there is no public access at the moment. The current proposed opening date is late spring 2021. Stone Food and Drink Festival would also like to extend further massive thanks to Lexus Stoke for their very generous sponsorship which has enabled us to produce this video. Hopefully we shall be back next year on Westbridge Park for the 2021 Stone Food and Drink Festival. So. Put the dates in your diary now. The 1st, 2nd and 3rd of October. Hopefully we'll see you then and thanks for watching.